In the profoundly insightful letter, Opening the Eyes of Wooden and Painted Calves, Nichiren Daishonin illuminates a profound truth about the nature of existence, that great evil inevitably gives rise to great good. His poetic words resonate across the centuries. Great events do not have small omens. When great evil occurs, great good will follow. These words encapsulate a deep spiritual wisdom that spans Buddhist teachings as well as numerous other faith traditions and philosophies. The prevalence of darkness, delusion, and widespread suffering is not a reason to despair, but rather a harbinger that light, enlightenment, and collective upliftment are emerging. The notion that profound negativity births profound positivity may seem paradoxical on the surface. How could the most pernicious evils catalyze the blossoming of the highest good? Yet this is the esoteric mystery that the mystics and awakened ones have long revealed. In the Christian tradition, we find an echo of this truth in the gospel words, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verses 11 to 12. The presence of lies, hatred, and oppression signal that one is on the path of ultimate redemptive love. Similarly, in the Islamic tradition, the great Sufi poet Rumi expressed, the wound is the place where the light enters you. Pain and trauma can serve as gateways to receiving the splendor of divine luminosity. The underlying essence is that contrast allows for clarity. Evil, suffering, and ignorance afford the opportunity for good, joy, and wisdom to shine forth in brilliant contradistinction. As Nichiren elucidates, since the worst slander already prevails throughout the country, the supreme true law will spread without fail. The depths of depravity are the black velvet backdrop that allows the diamond-like truth to radiate forth all the more radiantly. After all, how could we perceive and appreciate the precious nature of light without having experienced darkness? How could we taste the sweetness of compassion without the counterpoint of cruelty? The existential extremes are what awaken us to the blazing centrality of the eternal dharma, the deathless teachings of the Buddha's enlightenment. This is why Nichiren counsels his followers, what have any of you to regret? Even in the midst of slanderous oppression, there is profound cause for celebration. As he proclaims with a sense of ecstatic wonderment, although you are not the venerable Mahakashyapa, you should leap for joy. Although you are not Shariputra, you should rise and dance. Why should the disciples of the Lotus Sutra feel such exuberance amidst an atmosphere of hostility and ignorance? Because, as the great teacher elucidates, these are the very circumstances that unveil the universal truth in all its unvarnished resplendence. The renowned Buddhist philosopher and activist Dr. B. R. Ambedkar echoed this wisdom when he asserted, the Buddha taught that misery can be overcome simply by developing a habit of the mind. He asked the miserable to observe the existential states directly for themselves. As darkness and negativity manifest outwardly with ever-increasing intensity, this is the universe's way of compelling us to look inward, to witness the eternal light of our own Buddha nature. The swirling winds of the mundane world become the catalysts that force us to take refuge in the abiding peacefulness within. Out of great evil arises great good by laws as inviolable as gravity. This is the extraordinary promise revealed in Nichiren Buddhism, that even the most dire circumstances contain the seed of enlightenment, that the worst delusions are inviting us to awaken to our highest calling. All the ignorance, hatred, and defilement of the corrupt age are but temporary illusions that highlight the permanence of the ultimate reality of Buddhahood. As Nichiren conveys with an air of awe and reverence, when Bodhisattva Jogyo emerged from the earth, he leapt forth joyfully, and when Bodhisattva Fugen arrived, the ground trembled in six directions. The arising of these emissaries of wisdom into the temporal realm was greeted with seismic waves of joy, for their very presence heralded the overthrow of ignorance by the triumph of cosmic awakening. These transcendent figures remind us that we too are destined for supreme enlightenment. The very fact that we are mired in darkness and delusion in this earthly plane of existence is an inviolable guarantee that our eternal Buddha nature will emerge and establish peace, wisdom, and compassion here on earth. 
As the ancient Buddhist text the Lotus Sutra declares, at that time I, the Buddha, took a great vow, hoping to make all persons equal to me, without any distinction between us. Each one of us, beginning from our present state of ignorance, is destined to attain the highest enlightenment and manifest the qualities of infinite wisdom and boundless compassion. This mystery is too vast and profound for words to fully capture, which is why Nichiren humbly admits, there are many things I wish to tell you, but as they are too numerous, I shall stop here. And yet, in what he has imparted, the fundamentally liberating principle is made transparently clear, our present sorrows and struggles are the very forces cultivating our ultimate and inevitable enlightenment. In the face of unrelenting oppression, injustice, and malice, it is not only permissible but spiritually imperative to feel a ferocious joy welling up from the core of one's being. This is the rapturous realization that all the apparent evil we encounter is merely the universe infinitely conspiring to awaken us to our eternal Buddha wisdom. Let this awareness set us alight with a blissful and resolute determination. Let it empower us to transform all afflictions into profound peace through the ceaseless practice of sowing the seeds of enlightenment everywhere we go. For in doing so, we manifest as living embodiments of the cosmic principle that great good inevitably vanquishes and transcends all delusion. It is to this supreme realization that Nichiren continually summons our courageous faith. I will write to you again. He promises to reiterate this timeless truth endlessly, for it is the sole message worthy of ultimate repetition. Out of the greatest apparent darkness will dawn the radiance of supreme illumination, such is the ineffable mystery of life itself. Eternally victorious, let us advance, joyfully embracing each new challenge as a sure sign of the imminence of our supreme enlightenment. As we delve deeper into this paradigm-shifting perspective, it becomes evident that Nichiren's words serve as a profound call to awaken from the dream of duality. The realization that great good arises from great evil is not merely an intellectual proposition to ponder, but a lived experience to wholly embody. When we cling to the notion that good and evil are irreconcilable opposites engaged in a cosmic battle, we remain trapped in a limited consciousness that perpetuates the very delusion and suffering we seek to transcend. The illumined ones have long revealed that good and evil, like any apparent dichotomy, are simply two sides of the same non-dual reality. As the revered Indian Buddhist scholar Nagarjuna expounded in his philosophical masterwork, the fundamental wisdom of the middle way. Whatever is dependently co-arisen. That is explained to be emptiness. That, being a conditional designation, is itself the middle way. All phenomena, no matter how seemingly distinct or contradictory, are interdependently arising based on conditional causes and perceptions. Good and evil, like any dualistic concepts, are conditional designations that have no inherent existence outside of the discriminating mind that defines them. When we transcend the erroneous perception of good and evil as fixed, independent essences, we enter the profound, middle way, of non-dual wisdom. We come to realize that darkness and light, ignorance and enlightenment, are not two nor one, as the Buddhist scriptures elucidate. From this non-dual vista, we can perceive the ultimate wisdom in Nichiren's words about the relationship between great evil and great good. Awakened to the truth of interbeing and interdependence, we see that what we label as evil is simply the temporary appearance of delusion or spiritual ignorance. And this delusion, while very real in terms of its ability to cause suffering, is itself the fertile ground that allows true enlightenment to blossom. The famous 8th-century Buddhist teacher Shantideva captured this paradoxical truth exquisitely. Where would I possibly find enough leather? To cover the entire earth? But with leather coverings for my feet? It's as if the whole universe has covered ground. While we may despair at attempting to eliminate all evil or delusion from the universe, we need only transform our own ignorance to experience the entire cosmos as an unfolding tapestry of profound wisdom and beauty. The apparent evil, out there, is simply revealing our own misperceptions, which we can perpetually shed one layer after the next through our Buddhist practice. As our own evil tendencies and attachments are released, the universe itself is liberated from being perceived through the distorted lens of duality. 
This is the great secret embodied by the enlightened ones. That reality itself is a vast, borderless mirror constantly reflecting back our own state of consciousness. When we awaken from the ignorance that divides the world into good and evil, we discover the luminous non-dual ground that is the eternal source of the phenomenal worlds arising. The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are those who have integrated this non-dual realization so profoundly that they experience every circumstance, no matter how apparently good or evil, as a manifestation of the one true Dharma reality. This is why the great awakened beings like Jogyo and Fugen are able to leap forth joyfully and perceive the very ground trembling in six directions as expressions of the same unified movement of cosmic wisdom and compassion. For the enlightened ones, there is only this one reality, endlessly manifesting in myriad forms, with no shred of delusion to conceive any part of it as separate, static or inherently flawed. All apparent evil is recognized as simply the universe's creative displaying of itself to point us toward ever subtler revelations of its inexhaustible quintessence. This is the supreme realization proclaimed by Nichiren, and the one he invites us all to ceaselessly embody through our courageous practice of embracing the universe exactly as it is. There is ultimately nothing to attain or eliminate, but only the ceaseless journey of shedding the confining cataracts of our own misperceptions to allow the blinding light of the Dharma to brilliantly illuminate all facets of the breathtaking life arena.